Hey Harmonizers, it is time for session one with my little Mustang, Tom's Treasure. We're gonna try to see if we can do some touching and see if we can maybe even do a little bit of leading. So let's do session number one with Tom's Treasure. So here's a little look at Little Miss Treasure. As I came into the pen, I put my halters and ropes there and you can see she's sniffing them and checking them out and kind of seeing what's going on. So this was before I brought over my jump stander to set up my uh, camera. I totally forgot to bring my tripod with me. So I'm just using a, uh, a jump standard to prop up my camera to film. But she's looking really curious and she's investigating, giving them a little paw. So that's kind of a good sign. So here is the very first kind of footage of me kind of interacting with her. And she already is used to grain because she gets grain every day as a vitamin mineral supplement. So she's used to getting food and she likes grain, which makes it a little easier. Otherwise, they usually have to use alfalfa hay or um, some freshly picked uh, grass because mustangs can be a little picky. But what you guys can kind of see here is that you know, even though she's not terrified of me, she's definitely not coming over to me just because I have a bucket of food. You know, she's not like that food motivated kind of thing. So she still walks away from me. And what we can see off the bat is if you compare her to my other Mustangs, uh, Meriki was definitely the most terrified of all my Mustangs. You know, he, he ran around the pen really scared just by me standing in the pen with him. And then I had my other Mustangs like Kaibu and Arwen who were pretty easy once they figured out the positive reinforcement thing. They were really quick to train it. So I would say she's not the most difficult because I think that that still goes to uh, Meriki, but definitely not the most easy either. So she's kind of somewhere in the middle. So you can see she's kind of walking away a little bit. And I'm just kind of playing some join up game stuff with her right now to try to get her to realize to look at me. And my approach to taming and gentling Mustangs is very different from a lot of other people. I don't, you know, use any flag or chasing them around or anything like that. I might follow, but I definitely don't chase. And there's a big difference between following and chasing. I still use both negative and positive reinforcement. Uh, and if you're not sure what that is, positive reinforcement is when you add something positive to encourage a behavior to happen again. So for example, the food I'm using and the negative reinforcement is when you take away something to encourage a behavior. So for example, here I'm drawing her towards me and I'm offering her to eat out of the bucket of food from my hand. And this is when she has her first moment of eating out of the bucket of food from my hand. So this is positive reinforcement because she's something's being added and she's getting something for that. And positive reinforcement helps horses with motivation and can help them with learning. But we also know that negative reinforcement is good for horses that are scared and for um, horses in different learning states of mind. But what's key is that when you use negative reinforcement, which is basically pressure and release, that you have to be super careful about how much pressure you use because you don't want to cause them to be really scared. So here you can see um, Treasure's pretty nervous about eating food out of the bucket for the first time. You know, she jumps backwards. You can see her twitching in her body. So all of those signs just basically let us know that she's kind of scared and she's intimidated. So I'm letting her go come and go from that bucket of food freely. I'm not trying to trap her there or anything like that. She's uh, free to come and go. And I'm skipping along in this video so it's not a ridiculously long video. So the next clip here is when we've made some more progress where she's starting to do the fist touches where she touches me and then she gets to have the rewards and eat out of the bucket. And if you guys want to see the full longer video where I go into more detail and explain the pieces a little bit more if you're interested in doing some Mustang gentling or training, then I post my Mustang videos in my Harmony Connection Club. So I have a, an online school at www.harmonyhorsemanshipacademy.com and you can see um, the different courses that are available there and it's in the Connection Club where I have all of my Mustang videos. 
So one of the interesting things is I saw that she is a double swirl, but notice how her swirls are stacked on top of each other. So she's got one swirl directly on top of the other swirl. So when I was looking this up a little bit, it looks like it means that it's a horse that can be unpredictable and almost be kind of bipolar, which makes me a little bit nervous to be working with her. So I'm very curious if you know of another horse that has double swirls that are stacked on top of each other. Uh, if they have side-by-side -side swirls, which are, if you don't know what swirls are, they're the little kind of whirls of where the hair kind of meets and goes in different directions and kind of makes a circle. And if they've got double side-by-side -side ones on their head, it usually means that they're highly focused and talented. And that's what Alicia is and that's what Trivia Time was. But um, treasures are on top of each other, so that's not as ideal as far as I understand it. But I'd be curious to know if you know of a horse that has uh, swirls on top of each other, because I'd love to see other examples. Now, if I didn't know about swirls and swirlology, I'd probably say, you know, she seems like a really nice little horse. You know, she's progressing, progressing really nicely. You know, she hasn't done anything nasty to me whatsoever. She's been so polite with taking the food. She's being good. You can see here I'm starting to progress to being able to touch her face and rub on her face. And she's doing a fantastic job, you know, being a little scared where she jumps back and stuff. But overall, you know, she's doing really, really well. This is the first session and we're doing a longer session than normal because my time is very compressed since we're um, down in the States and I'm, I'm only going to be here for a couple days. So I really have to kind of make the most for it and do more in a day than I typically would. And this is just kind of speeding up some footage for you guys here. This is me starting to introduce the lead rope to her. So I've got a rope and I'm just kind of dragging it around the arena to start with or the pen, I should say. Just because I didn't want her to be spooked by it. I didn't want her to be like, you know, what are you doing with this lead rope? And I did do a few other things to kind of prep her for that lead rope before I went to attach it to her as well. But I just wanted to show you guys this little bit here where I, you know, took her around with the lead rope on the ground so she could see it all on the ground before we actually attached it and started to work on some leading. So this is still all part of the first session. So we definitely covered a lot on that first session and did more than I typically would in a first session. Uh, also a little bit different because she has a halter on. They put a halter on her when she came out of the holding pen. And normally I don't have a halter put on my horses. So I'd have to do more time of gentling their face to be able to get them to trust me to put that halter on and get that first little step. But because she already has that halter on, I did some face touching as you guys saw and then now we're progressing into that leading portion so this is a um, great start just trying to get her to follow and not be scared of that rope and getting her to be interested to follow me and she's doing a really good job and she's already kind of learned to follow me from doing the groundwork that we were doing before but then she's gonna feel that rope and she pulls on it a little bit and then she does get worried. So she's pulling on it and she's like, hey, wait a second, this isn't letting go. She doesn't know what the right answer is. So she gives a little rear, goes kind of trotting off a little bit. And I'm just holding the rope in one hand. And because the pen isn't particularly big and the rope is 22 feet long, I'm able to keep a hold of that rope and kind of apply gentle pressure to it as she's going around try to show her when you're running like that you don't you don't get away from the rope now she does get it kind of she kind of is tossing her head a little bit here where you can't see and she ends up putting the rope on the opposite side of her which does scare her a little bit and she kind of goes forward and she spins herself around and then the rope ends up on the on the side of her so it's not um you know confusing her anymore so even with that you know that's pretty um you know, normal response, you know, she's nervous of it, but she didn't do anything super crazy. Like, yeah, she jumped forward and whatnot, but overall she stayed really sane and really kind of, um, listening and, and didn't go what I call black where they get so panicked that they start, you know, hurting themselves or getting into a place where you're worried for their safety. So we worked a lot more on this whole rope thing and leading and getting her to 
come up and started to add some of that positive reinforcement in when we're doing kind of the pressure and release where I was holding the rope as she's going around the ring and trying to hold that rope until she figured out the correct answer, that would be a negative reinforcement example of using pressure and release, which is important for the horses to learn how to respond to that pressure. So I think it's important for horses to understand pressure and release because it can help them in real life situations if they get their foot caught in a fence or things like that to understand how to give to that. So I thought it'd be great if we finish our first session with being able to unhook the rope. And this is so great. I unhook the rope and she still follows me around and is curious about me. So I'm pretty excited about this first session. We accomplished a lot. And the most important thing is that on her own free will, she's willing to come over and say hello. And she's willing to get that positive reinforcement. And she's letting me pet her head and lead her and... I can attach a lead rope and stuff like that. But most important is that given the free choice, you know, she's choosing to be with me. And this is all without chasing um, or being aggressive with her. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your favorite part.